Hello everyone, Josh Ferris here, at it again with some more Epic 7, and today I got something special to show you guys. So, I don't know if I'm in the minority or the majority here when it comes to how much I actually think Zeno is very, very good. Now, if you have not noticed, my Zeno is already level 51, so I definitely put some farming into this guy. It took me about 47 runs on hard difficulty to get all the dupes that I needed, and I got the free one for beating it 40 times. Thanks to the new um, event here that we have going on. Where is it? The Rock, Paper, Scissors. I won. I got my 600 stamina. That helped significantly, um, and I've been slowly working on him. I even got him 4-star Awakened already. And, of course, I got him to level 51 already, 6-star Awakened. He's at SSS Devotion. I even got some spare equipment that I had that's actually really good equipment except for a couple pieces. And I also got the armor, um, the artifact, rather, that I wanted for him already. And I did all of that in four hours. I did not have any altars. I didn't have nothing. I did everything from scratch in four hours, and I did it all on call in the Discord uh, with some of the other guys. So that was pretty cool and fun to do. And I'm actually very um, excited for this guy because he's really, really good. I feel like a lot of people are looking down on him like, oh, he's not going to be good in PvE. But I feel like, no, that's not true. He's going to be good in all f sorts of content. He's going to be good probably in the Guild Wars because he's going to be able to be that very good anti-meta, especially with DNs running around everywhere. Um, that spam debuffing that he can do is awesome. Sure, stuns don't really work on bosses in most of the content, but bleeding does. So that's a, a cool thing. Plus, the artifact that I'm running with him also helps as well so he's very very good he's also gonna be a really good horde clearer because he can you know just keep spamming all those debuffs and i'm running him with speed and hit so we're gonna be talking about my personal builds that i would recommend for him um and what artifacts i'd recommend for him as well and if he's actually worth running in your main team so let's go ahead and open this bad boy up let's go to details here all right so as you guys know this is a free Five star that they give us. You only need to pull this guy six times to max his devotion and to get him to a six star. So I recommend everybody do that, especially if you do not have a six star yet. Even if you got to farm him on normal and it may take you the full two, three weeks, whatever, it's still worth doing it. And as you can see, we got some pretty good armor on this bad boy already. As you can see here, we got effectiveness attack, uh, effect resistance, and speed on this bad boy. We got 9% attack, 8% HP, defense 9%, critical hit chance 3%. And of course, these, these can still go up several more times over, you know, clear up to 15. And then we got this bad boy maxed out. Now this one, um, I like this one a lot. It's already maxed out as well, so it helped out. Um, I think the worst armor pieces that I currently have are probably the boots because there's a couple flat stats that I don't like. Of course, defense and HP there. But it does got some pretty solid speed. And effectiveness and attack isn't too bad either. So that's not too bad. Uh, the necklace is another one that has, um, you know, a flat main stat. That's really its main problem. So we're going to have to definitely replace those two pieces. Now, I picked this up in a secret shot some time ago. Health is 36%, which is perfect because he scales to HP. Um, his effectiveness 6%, critical hit damage, uh, speed, and critical hit chance. Not too bad. So it's a very, very good ring. And we can, of course, upgrade that. To 15 as well and then we have the artifact that i highly recommend running Syra ren now abyssal crown is good if you want to try to maximize your stunning potential but however stunning won't help you so much with the bosses so in order to kind of you know make this guy good for all content i you know thought hey Syra ren is the way to go we thought about it we want we went over in our heads a few times some scenarios in the discord and we really realized that Syra ren was the true way to go because getting that additional percentage um you know well getting that initial percentage to inflict one random debuff when attacking is awesome because since his speed is so high his natural speed after you awaken him four times is 115 so he's naturally got really good speed which is awesome so you put speed set on this guy, he's going to attack often, and you know with all of his debuff spamming that he can do, it's going to be awesome for PvP, PvE, helping you clear out early waves and stuff like that, helping you get to the boss. Because let's be honest, you're probably going to run him with a defense break unit anyway, and another DPSer with a support or healer. So no matter what, he's going to have a value in all forms of content. He's just really, really good. And the fact that he's an ice hero, he's not going to see too many weaknesses as outside of maybe... Um, uh, the occasional earth uh, elements that you run into, especially if you want to farm goblin, or I'm sorry, golem, is he's not going to see too much of a disadvantage when it comes to typing, which is going to be good. He'll mostly be neutral or have an advantage or whatever, so that's awesome. And again, he's a free six star, so why not take it? And he's one of the easiest six stars that you ever get probably in this game, so definitely jump on board. So 
yes, I would recommend Sire Ren. If you don't got Sire Ren, Abyssal Crown is okay. It helps with the spamming of stuns, especially if you want to make it a PvP unit only. But if you want to do it for more all-purpose content, Sire Ren is definitely the way to go because you can get defense downs. You can get um, additional uh, stun. I'm sorry, not stuns. You can get um, bleeding on your S1 as well. Um, instead of just relying on your S3, you could also get um, attack down. I believe you can also get, uh, let's see, uh, what else do we have? We've got sleep. You know, you know, you get the idea. There's plenty of debuffs that you can possibly get from this. And if you can level this up as high as possible, you know, that percentage is just going to get better and better. Plus, we're running effectiveness to really help them out by running a set of hit. So... This leads us to what are really the the best and most optimal builds that you could put on this guy. I feel like um, speed and HP and speed and hit are probably the way to go with this guy. Because as you right as you know right now, the PvP meta is definitely speed, and speed is also really, really good in PvE. Especially if you can build this guy to have really good HP and defense and even really good attack. Because he's already going to have high speed. As you can see, we're at 190 already. There's no reason that you probably couldn't push this guy over 200. So he's going to attack pretty often. He's going to debuff pretty early on. Getting a chance of stunning, especially if you can stun a DN. She won't be able to get her barriers up or her attack and critical uh, decreasing off early battle, especially when you're doing PvP. Just amazing. And the fact that this, this guy can really clear out hordes and help you get to the boss a lot sooner is also not bad. I feel like this guy is just going to be good overall. And matter of fact, we did some testing. And I actually have a system in place where I can actually test base stats um at level 60 um pre-awakening and see kind of where they rank this guy is currently a 4.0 and the highest in the game is a 4.25 so this guy is actually up there in the top 10 top 15 and actual high base stats and what i mean by high base stats i'm including attack defense hp and speed he's actually in the top 10 top 15 in the entire game for base stats at level 60 with pre-awakening so absolutely amazing and he's a mage so the first thing you're thinking is he's gonna have low defense but his um base stat for defense is over 640 at level 60 and that's with no equipment so this guy is very tanky he scales the hp so you can get that hp up pretty high and of course since he's got that high initial speed you can put a speed set on him and get his and get his attacks off more often which is really really good and if you didn't notice if you look at his devotion at sss he gives you 14 a whopping 14.4 percent effectiveness so if you guys are out there running falcon or clurry or any any other unit that really has a lot of you know you know meaningful usage when it comes to effectiveness this guy is going to boost them all an additional almost 15 percent which is absolutely amazing this guy will be really good with my cartuja and other units that rely on percentages as well for their skill ones two or threes so this is pretty damn awesome i'm very happy that i was able to put some time and effort into this guy as you can see he's already four star awakened six star level 51 we'll get him to 60 probably sometime tomorrow and I'm just overall very hyped. I had some good gear laying around to put on this guy. I had the artifact. I hope I helped you guys out. And, you know, some of you may be on the fence. Is he worth going for? 100% absolutely. This guy will serve you very, and I mean very well, in countermetering. Uh, countermetering, yeah, that's a word. Countermetering the actual pvp that we're currently going right now is going to be good in guild wars no doubt because you're going to be seeing dns everywhere and other buffers perhaps so him debuffing is going to be amazing um getting those stuns off those um bleeds the uh um you know the, just all the stuff that he does is just amazing um and then he's got this right here increased defense and damage of ancient beast by five percent when the enemy uses a non-attack skill can stack up to 10 times so you can get up to another whopping 50 percent buff on those just from his passive alone plus it increases effect uh percentage as well and skill enhancement so the thing you're probably going to focus on more though is for a silence and bleed on a skill three you definitely want to try and get that up as high as possible now he does unfortunately not have a skill cooldown but it's not a big issue because his skill cooldown is already pretty low in a modest four turns so not very bad and his s1 you can actually get that believe up to 50 percent let me take a quick look actually no it looks like 35 percent so still not too bad but again you're also running him with syra ren 
So keep that in mind. You're running that with Siren, which is going to give him additional chances at additional debuffers. So this guy is just going to become the debuff master, essentially, in your lineup. So very, very cool unit. Very, very powerful. He actually got a really big, big punch to his attacks. So that's awesome. So he's a mage with a little bit of juice behind his punches. He can debuff. He can even help raise effectiveness for the rest of your team via his amazing uh, devotion that you can get. So a lot of cool things this guy can do. Very versatile. I like it. He's awesome. He's free. What more can you say about this guy? And his design is legit. So much different from every other hero that you're running. He, you know, It's basically like running a, a, an evil villain on your team. It's really cool, and I like it. And I love his design, his concept. Everything is cool, and by far, he has one of the coolest S3 animations in the game. Like, dude, it's like a big tremor. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Tremors, but it looks like a big tremor, bullworm type of thing coming out of the ground and swallowing your, uh, you know, your enemy whole. And it's, it's a really cool animation, and I love it. So, anyways, hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Hope I helped some of you out. A unit is awesome. Um, very well recommended from this side of the things here. Until next time, hope you guys subscribe for some, for some more. Drop me a like below if you like the video. Comment what you guys think about this guy. And before you do anything else, make sure you consider going to the description below and joining us in the Discord so we can keep the conversations going before and after the video. Until next time, I'll catch you guys all later. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are. And peace.